So in today's episode, I'm going to go through the camera settings I use for my street photography at nighttime. Briefly, before getting into the settings, I use Fujifilm for all of my photography, but the settings I talk about and the tips I talk about in this episode can be used for any camera, regardless of the camera brand. Secondly, I shoot all of my stuff handheld. I'm never using a tripod and I don't use flash either. And one last thing, you can really support this channel by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe as well. So first up is to keep your ISO as low as possible. So ISO refers to the sensitivity of the sensor inside of your camera. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive it is, the more details it picks up. So you're probably thinking, why don't you just raise the ISO all the way up to the max and then shoot like that at nighttime. Now the problem is, the higher you raise your ISO, the more digital noise gets introduced into your images. And when there's lots of noise in your images, details get messy, the image looks generally kind of mushy and really ugly and it gets harder and harder to edit. So there's always a bit of a trade-off here and the trick is to work out the highest ISO you're comfortable working with. And this can really change depending on the camera you're using. I used to use the A6000 and the max I could really go to was about 1600 before things started falling apart. On my Fujifilm X-T4, I'm more than comfortable going to 3200, sometimes 6400. The main thing here is find the maximum ISO that you're happy to work with and when you're out shooting at night time either set it at that max ISO or around it or you can do what I do. On my Fujifilm I like to set auto settings. Now pretty much every single camera brand has a version of these types of settings and you can do the same on your camera but I'm able to set a minimum ISO, a maximum ISO and also a minimum shutter speed. So what that means is I let the camera decide which ISO to use, I just tell the camera the maximum it's allowed to go to. So when I'm out doing street photography and taking shots like you can see on screen now, I've set the max ISO to 3200 and I've got my minimum shutter speed at around 80th of a second or 100th of a second, depending on what lens I use. And I'm gonna get into that in a bit more detail shortly. And with those settings, even if I'm hitting 3200 or if I'm pushing it up to 6400, I'm more than happy with the images I'm getting. It's not too noisy and it's still pretty easy to edit over on Lightroom. So shutter speed is a really big one for street photography at night. The lower your shutter speed is, the more light you're letting into your sensor. However, if you go too far down, all your subjects are going to appear blurry and you're going to start running into problems with camera shake and movement and things like that. Now unless you're looking to take blurry images for creative reasons, you're going to want to find what the minimum shutter speed you're comfortable working with is. Now in my case, if I'm using the 35mm f1.4, I'm happy shooting at about 60th of a second in burst mode or 80th of a second. However, I do try to keep it above the 100th of a second mark. The reason I mentioned the focal range of my lens is, usually you wanna keep your shutter speed at least double what your lens is. So if you're using a 35 millimeter lens, you wanna be around that 70th of a second. If you're using a 50 millimeter lens, you wanna be around 100th of a second and so on. In my case, as I said previously, I'm using Fujifilm's auto settings and I set the minimum shutter speed at nighttime to around 80th of a second or depending on the conditions. If it is a more well lit area, then I will shoot at 100th of a second. So third up on the list is to shoot wide open or at the lowest f-stop possible. So this really depends on the lens that you're using. For example, if I'm shooting with the 35 millimeter f1.4, then at nighttime, I'm shooting at 1.4. Or if I'm shooting with the 50 millimeter f2, then at nighttime, I'm shooting at f2. The key thing to remember here is, the lower the f-stop is, the more light you let into your camera sensor, which in turn means you can shoot at a lower ISO and at a faster shutter speed. It's also the reason I rarely use zoom lenses at nighttime. Generally speaking, zoom lenses are slower than prime lenses. For example, my fastest zoom lens is the 16-55 f2.8, which I'm filming this episode with. But yeah, that's a f2.8 lens, and that lets in a lot less light than this f2, and much less light than the 35 millimeter f1.4. So if you are looking to shoot at night, I do recommend getting a prime, and if you can, get a fast prime as well. So the fourth key setting is to use burst mode. Now, some photographers may look down on burst mode. I've seen comments when I've mentioned that I use burst mode saying I'm not a proper photographer and the rest of it. But to be honest, if you're shooting at nighttime and you wanna capture the best frame possible, I do highly recommend shooting in burst mode. 
Now the main reason for this is when you are shooting at night time, you're often using slower shutter speeds. So things like camera shake or your hand moving slightly, these can all introduce shake into your images and therefore it can make your whole image blurry and mess up the whole shot. Also, if your subject's moving pretty fast through the frame and you're shooting at a 50th of a second or a 60th of a second, the subject may appear to be blurry even if your hand is perfectly still. So to get around all of this, what I do is I shoot in burst mode and when my subject's moving into the frame to the exact point in the frame where I want them to be, I shoot in burst mode and I'm capturing 10 to 15 shots. Now one of those 10 to 15 shots is going to be the perfect frame and it makes it much easier to capture that decisive moment you're looking for. Also, when you're out at nighttime shooting, sometimes you don't want to stand in the same place for hours on end for safety reasons or whatever, you know, sometimes it's cold and it's raining. So when the subject does come along, you really want to nail it and you don't want to mess up. So if you're shooting at nighttime, turn that burst mode on and that way you're going to increase your chances of capturing the photos you want to capture. Finally, it's to shoot raw. Now there's no reason not to shoot raw, you should always shoot raw. Even if you're using Fujifilm and the JPEGs are really good, you can shoot both in JPEG and raw. When shooting at night time, you really want that dynamic range. Now I've talked about this in a previous night photography episode, but when I shoot at night, sometimes I like to underexpose, especially if there's really bright highlights in the scene. And that's because digital cameras these days, they're really good at picking up details in the shadows, but not as good as picking up details in highlights. So when you do underexpose your image, if you're shooting in RAW, you can bring that image into Lightroom and bring most of the details out of the shadows. Whereas if you shoot in JPEG, it kind of limits your dynamic range and it limits how far you can push those images in post. So this is a pretty simple one. If you're shooting at nighttime, remember to shoot in RAW. The main point is in this episode is firstly, try to keep your ISO low. I shoot at maximum 3200, 6400 at a push. Secondly, try to keep that shutter speed low. I like shooting at around the hundredth of a second at night time, but I don't mind going down to a 60th or even a 50th of a second. And finally, when it comes to aperture, shoot as fast as you possibly can. I'm shooting pretty much all of my night shots wide open at left 2 at left 1.4. If you've got burst mode, turn that on. It makes shooting at night time far easier. And finally, make sure you shoot in RAW. So that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you have any tips of your own, drop them in the comments below. Or if you have any questions about today's episode, again, drop them in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you. A huge thanks for supporting this channel. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one.